Blackmagic just ended their NAB live stream event, and we basically have a roadmap for what they are going to put out in 2025. Now, there are so many things that were announced in this event, and if you are a fan of all of the broadcast products, well, you have about an hour and a half worth of stuff to watch. Unfortunately, this is not a world I'm knowledgeable in, and it's not stuff I really talk about this channel, so uh, you'll have to find that information somewhere else. Maybe go watch the live stream. But when it comes to DaVinci Resolve 20, all the new uh, production camera announcements. This is where things get interesting because the thing that I thought was going to be the big thing actually ended up not really being the big thing. Let's get into it. And actually, I want to call out support for uh, one of my fellow creators here, Mr. Alex Tech, who I'm sure you all know. Speaking of DaVinci Resolve 20, for the past I don't even know how many years, Alex has been making incredible uh, presets and plugins for DaVinci Resolve to make your life easier. I personally hate anything that has to do with keyframing. And so he's got his Mr. Alex Tech Magic Animate Toolkits. Part of the reasons I love the Magic Animate V3 is that it's only really one tool in your toolbar that you have to drag on to whatever clip you want to affect. And then inside of the inspector panel is where all of the magic happens. You can go through and make all of the advanced adjustments that you could ever possibly want. The great part is you can actually download all of his tools for free, test them out for yourself, and if you get a liking, you can upgrade right inside of DaVinci Resolve. And by the way, the full tools are only like 29 bucks anyway, so they're kind of a no-brainer to have. I've been using these tools for over six months now, and they just keep getting better and better. So if you want to learn more for yourself, pick up Magic Animate V3 or even his Magic Zoom plugin. Check out all the link in the description below. And again, Alex is a fantastic creator within this space, so definitely go give his channel and videos some love. I'm sure he's gonna have so many incredible tutorials and things to point out in DaVinci Resolve 20 because holy crap, were there so many announcements. When looking at my notes for what came out in DaVinci Resolve 20, AI tools is at the top of the list here. We have uh, IntelliScript, which you can actually import a script and then it will look at the shots you got and it will try to intelligently edit together a video based on your script. It'll do this by analyzing, of course, the script and then the dialogue, and it doesn't have to be the exact dialogue. Apparently, it will look at kind of word variations and get something that's close, and it will also pick what it thinks is the best takes. AI Music Editor is going to allow you to intelligently uh, stretch and kind of lengthen music to fit your project better. We've seen tools like this go into Premiere and, and I think Final Cut also has this, so it's nice that's gonna be built into DaVinci Resolve as well. AI Voice Conversion, something about basically replacing your voice with some other voice, but still having tone, inflections, and all that stuff to match. Uh, vertical content workspace optimizations, multi text text boxes, so you don't have to like stack a million different like text layers on top of each other. Very much looking forward to that one. Blackmagic Cloud Folder. So now you don't just have to have a Blackmagic Cloud project, but you can actually create a cloud folder. And this will take up your, of course, storage space in Blackmagic Cloud. But then you can use this folder in a bunch of projects. So if you have footage that uh, you use multiple times or your editors need to source from the same place, then you can just have a singular folder. And then only what gets brought into the actual timeline is what will be downloaded and brought into your actual cloud project. This is a small one, but you can now uh, drag your media in your media pool to be more of a custom thing. So you can actually have empty spaces. Um, that's going to get chaotic, but very similar to like a Mac desktop, you can either clean it up or you can have it kind of spread all around, which it's going to be interesting and just so much more magic mask enhancements, AI depth map is more accurate. And then we have two things that are kind of in the coming soon category. These are the Apple immersive tools, which I thought would be announced, but it seems like they still need a little bit more time. Uh, it's OK. The no one's really shooting on Apple immersive uh, camera yet anyway. Uh, and then AI set extender. Again, we saw this at Adobe Max last year where they were wowing everyone by uh, basically generative fill expansion for video. 
And this is coming later this year to DaVinci Resolve as AI set expander works the same way. You type in a prompt and it expands it. These types of tools are nuts to me. I mean, the fact that Photoshop can do it, I'm still mind blown by that, how they're gonna do that and have it track and match frames. I have a feeling these tools are gonna be very clunky for quite some time, but you know, it could be good in a pinch. All right, so now let's talk about what, of course, I know you all clicked on this video for, and that is the Pixis 12K, the update to the Pixis that came out last year. Now, this one, I, I, we all know the reason that we're gonna be a little sad here. Okay, let's run through it. It's the same exact body, seems to come in all of the same mounts, but we have the same 12K sensor that's in the Ursa Cine 12K, which is an amazing sensor that I've only had for about a week and I've absolutely fallen in love with. 16 stops of dynamic range, 12K full frame, but of course, a lot of people don't care about 12 frame. My video yesterday, the amount of comments of people saying, I don't need 12K, I don't need 12K. I get it, I don't really shoot in 12K. Oh, I think I accidentally left this in 12k but normally i shoot this in 4k or 8k down sampled but it looks so much better than a regular 4k camera now i was most curious about the frame rates because this takes a 26 volt b mount battery while the pixis 12k is going to keep the same power options here either plug-in or bpu batteries and this is going to limit the frame rates that you can achieve from the sensor. A lot of it depends on what sort of uh, aspect ratio you, you wanna shoot at. So if you want 12K uh, open gates, you're gonna get up to 40 FPS. 12K two to four to one, you can go up to 60. And at 8K and 4K in two, four, one, you'll get up to 112 FPS. So it's basically half of the max frame rate that you can get from the Ursa Cine 12K. Honestly, that is still wildly impressive and better than what I thought. I thought everything was gonna be capped at like 60 FPS would be the very highest for any of the resolutions. So that's certainly not something to complain about. And yes, we all need to take a moment of silence for the uh, internal NDs. There are still no internal NDs on the Pixis. Uh, clearly, they cannot fit it into that size of body, which a lot of you pointed out in the comments from yesterday's video. I was extremely optimistic about internal NDs being on this version. And uh, and as the day went on and as I read your comments, I started getting less and less hopeful. And it was kind of confirmed once we saw a more clear picture of that banner photo on the side of the building. In the first photo, it was so pixelated, I couldn't tell if they changed these two buttons right here to be a plus and a minus, similar to how we have the uh, internal NDs on the 12K here. I know for a lot of people that is gonna continue to be a deal breaker um, or at least a major setback and I get that. Uh, the final price for this comes out at five grand or five bucks just under that. So for me personally, I will be keeping my uh, Ursa Cine 12K and not returning it to get the Pixis 12K. There just wasn't enough that was added. It's not a vastly different camera, but actually the biggest announcement by far of this whole event was the fact that Blackmagic cameras are getting autofocus. Talk about something besides internal NDs that people have been asking and begging for forever is finally here. And it's not only coming to new cameras going forward. They have basically built a new AI Neuralink, whatever that means, fancy marketing terminology, as a software update or a firmware update to their existing cameras. Now, unfortunately, they are only starting it with the Blackmagic, uh, not Pocket, the Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K. So the 6K full frame, uh, they are starting it with that. I have a theory that the reason they're only starting with that camera and not the Pixis because it's the same sensor, same processor and everything is I'm guessing that's a smaller pool of people that own that camera than what who has the Pixis. And they probably want uh, essentially kind of a beta round of people. And they literally call it the I believe the camera, the 9.5 camera beta update. Um, and so hopefully they start rolling it out to these two cameras much sooner and they said it's it will be in the coming months or coming soon um, but I hope it's sooner than later but honestly I'm not going to complain too much because I was not expecting this at all. Blackmagic autofocus on my bingo card was not 
not there. And the UI, I think, is very, very clever the way they're doing it. Uh, you can have you can basically have object tracking. You have multi face face detection autofocus or, of course, you have point autofocus all the base standards here and it's using a mixture of what I'm guessing is like phase detection, contrast base, but also AI tools to analyze for faces and objects. As a first generation autofocus system, even if it's a bit clunky, if it works 80% of the time, 99% of the time I use manual focus, it's what I love. But for doing like talking heads, for example, that is going to be a game changer for moments like this. So I don't have to like reach over and make minor adjustments. I can move, I can hold up objects, Objects, that is going to be amazing to have. So for me, this was absolutely the biggest announcement and feature just completely out of nowhere. So uh, honestly, that makes me a little happier and definitely uh, settled the blow of not having internal NDs in the new Pixis. I know a lot of you are going to be disappointed by that, but uh, guys, autofocus and black magic, like we're here, the 2025, this is, we're done. This is it. Like Kofi and I were messaging throughout this entire event and we were just like, all right, come on, get past the broadcast stuff. So at the end of the day, which camera do I think you should get? The Pixis, the Pixis 12K, the Ursa Cine, of course, Cop out answer is it depends what you're looking for, but based on their price points and everything, this is just my opinion. I think if you are going to go with the Pixis, get the regular Pixis 6K. I think it's an amazing value for uh, 3000 bucks. The Pixis 12K, again, I just don't think is enough of a difference. However, if you have the budget for it, I really think $2,000 more is $2,000 more. I get that. But if you're already looking at a $5,000, by the time you accessorize it out, you will be very close to what you could have a minimal Ursa Cine setup uh, with internal NDs to get the same 12K sensor. And don't get me wrong, it's an amazing sensor. I was saying if you're already paying over $5,000 or right at $5,000 for that body, uh, in my opinion, you might as well go to seven and get an Ursa Cine. That's just my opinion. So personally, for me, the Pixis 12K is going to be a pass for now. My amazing friend Kofi is releasing a video pretty much the same time as me. So definitely go check out his live streams and his video on all this to get his opinions and his thoughts on everything that was announced today. And of course, both of us are going to be at NAB. We're going to be meeting with Blackmagic. I have like multiple meetings set up with them to check out all this new stuff. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.